You know, living here on the coast, we enjoy beautiful sunshiny days like this. Get out on your boat, just to get out working in the yard. Well, one of the things you need to be aware of is anything unusual that might pop off on your skin. Like I every now and then have these checked on the top of my head. They've been fine so far. But if you have something popping up, what you need to do is take a trip over here to Gulf Coast Plastic Surgery and Dermatology and visit with Mary Elizabeth Cordell. Now, she is the nurse practitioner here, and we're gonna go in and talk to her today and look at some of the things that you should watch out for that could be unusual and could cause some problems with you down the line on your skin. Mary Elizabeth Cordell is the nurse practitioner here. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, um, tell us a little bit of, uh, about yourself, if you would, please. Sure. Um, I am a nurse practitioner. I've been a nurse practitioner since 2002, whenever I graduated from uh, University of South Alabama over in Mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and I have previously worked in um, dermatology, uh, since 2009. Okay. Um, and before that, I did a little bit of critical care as well as gastroenterology. Oh, okay. So, okay. Kind of one end to the other. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the importance of uh, uh, early awareness of possible skin cancer. Yes, early awareness is crucial um, because if you do have skin cancers, you want to catch them at an early um, interval. Uh, the sooner you catch them, the, the better your um, you know, Chances survival. Are getting treated. Yes, your survival um, rates are. Now, so. skin cancer is one of the highest, has one of the highest, highest death rates of any of the cancers because it can spread so fast. Yes, melanoma, yes, can. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, when it gets into the later stages, although there are new treatments out uh, for it, those can be uh, very difficult and they still aren't at a very high rate of, um, of cure for that. Mm -hmm. So, but living here on the beautiful Gulf Coast, being out at the beach and just your everyday sunshine that you get, um, we are exposed to a significant amount of UV mm -hmm. uh, radiation and that is cumulative over the uh, course of your lifetime. So the rate UV exposure that you get as a child, also in your 20s and 30s, is compounded and by the time you get into your 40s and 50s, we start seeing um, you know, skin cancers such as basal cell carcinomas and squamous cell carcinomas in you know, sun exposed areas. Mm -hmm. Now, so, well, I don't know if people think they, they don't use sunscreen and say, oh, I have olive skin, I don't burn easily, I don't need to worry about wearing sunscreen. And that's probably a mistake. Yes, that is a fallacy. Everyone needs to wear sunscreen um, regardless of uh, your uh, skin color. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a real important um, aspect of education that I try to teach all of my patients is what to look for in a sunscreen and help them find one that they like so that they'll be uh, very, um, you know, good with wearing it. Yeah, well, I do. I mean, being bald, yes. Mm -hmm. Whenever I'm outside, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm like every 30 minutes, yes. I'm putting uh, fresh sunscreen, usually between an SPF 30 and SPF 50. Yes. That, uh, but like I said, I, I put it on every 30 minutes, uh, or so, especially if I'm you know, sweating or getting out, in mm -hmm. and out of the water, because even though it says, does it rinse off or wash off, it possibly can. You have some instances, uh, some uh, examples that you want to show us back here. We're going to go back and look at some of them. So, you know, if you see something strange on your skin that you could be more aware of. We're at the Gulf Coast Plastic Surgery and Dermatology talking to Mary Elizabeth Cordell. Now, are there several different types of skin cancer? Yes, the three biggest um, types of skin cancer that we see on a regular basis are basal cell carcinomas, uh, which are the most common form of skin cancer, mm -hmm. uh, as well as squamous cell carcinomas, and then also melanomas. There are several other subtypes of, melan of melanomas mm -hmm. and uh, different types of cancer such as Merkel cell, but those are very rare. Today I wanted to educate you on what to look for for basal cell carcinomas okay. and squamous cell carcinomas. And then also just to uh, kind of give you an update on what to look for as far as melanomas. Okay. So with the- Starting with the basal cell. With the basal cell, um, carcinomas. Like I said, this is the most common form of um, skin cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, the five warning signs that I teach my patients uh, to look for open sores that do not heal, uh, reddish patches or irritated areas that may crust, itch, or hurt, mm -hmm. 
a shiny bump or nodule, which may be pearly pink, clear, uh, red or white, or a small pink growth with rolled edges, crested indentations, and tiny blood vessels, mm -hmm. or even a scar-like area that may be flat, white, yellow, or waxy. Mm -hmm. So these things um, are, you know, can be indicative of basal cell carcinomas, mm -hmm. like I said, the most common form of skin cancer. So if you have any of these areas uh, noted on your sun exposed areas like face, ears, mm -hmm. neck, scalp, arms. chest, arms, those are the things that um, you need to come on in and let us check out. And, Better um, safe than sorry. Yes, yes. Now, can the basal cell, can they grow into something, uh, you know, like into the squamous or the melanoma over a period of time if you don't take care of them? No, they don't. Okay. They're usually very indolent type of cancers that just stay on the surface of the skin mm -hmm. and grow very slowly. Okay. So, uh, we have a couple of minutes left. You want to talk about the other ones here? Yes, the squamous cell carcinoma that is um, that can be located on the skin are called cutaneous squamous cell carcinomas. Mm -hmm. And those things um, that you want to look for, that's the second most common form of skin cancer, um, is a persistent scaly patch with irregular borders that bleed mm -hmm. or have crusting. Um, an elevated growth or central depression that occasionally bleeds. Uh, it can rapidly increase in size. Mm -hmm. um, an open sore that bleeds or crust, or a wart-like growth that can crust or occasionally bleed. Okay. Um, we do see quite a few patients come in with this type of cancer and they may think that it is a wart that is on their skin. Mm -hmm. Or they may think they have a cold sore or fever blister. Oh, wow. So we do see a lot of patients that come in with, um, you know, they suspect they have other you know, issues when it, and, and actually it is, you know, it can be a skin right. cancer. Right. I have about a minute left. If you would tell us real yes. quick about melanoma. Melanomas, um, we all know are ABCDEs, which I like to educate our patients on that. Um, it, those are signs of melanomas. Um, and melanoma is a deadly form of skin cancer, so you need to watch closely for that one. Mm -hmm. But A is for asymmetry, B is for borders, irregular, jagged edges, C is for color, anything that is dark in nature. Um, are different than your other uh, moles. D for diameter, um, things that may be larger than a pencil eraser, mm -hmm. dark or different. Um, and then E is for evolving or changing lesions. Wow. So many different things that you need to be aware of. If you spend a lot of time out in the sun, like I do, like I said, I have these on top of my head, which she says are fine right now, I get them <laughs> checked all the time. What you need to do is make an appointment and come over here to Gulf Coast uh, Plastic Surgery and Dermatology. Mm -hmm. They're on the corner of Gibson Road and Highway 90 at Ocean Springs.